I was so delighted because our energy is a good match. We're both like super enthusiastic. We can drive them crazy with enthusiasm. <laughs> you know, they'll go like, what is this, a pep talk? We're, we're the cheerleaders for therapy or something. Yay, yay, personality disorders, go get them, we'll help you. you, know, you know, I think we can have a lot of fun with this. <laughs>
contribution to Freudian theory that was not accepted by Freud. Freud did not like other people to contribute to Freudian theory and point out where he was wrong. I don't see how that could be, but he didn't like it and he turned Pearls down. And what, Freud, what Pearls noted that, and he wrote a book on it called Ego, Hunger and Aggression mm. is that when you're in the oral stage, you can just suck. Your choice is to turn your head away and reject entirely or take it in, the milk mm -hmm. and the food. But you could not interact with it. Mm -hmm. And that the invention of teeth, when people start getting teeth, it wasn't invented when they start coming in, the baby then could chew and could bite. The baby now had a weapon. It could bite the mother, it could bite the feeder if it didn't like what was going on. And it also could engage with the food. And that became a metaphor for pearls, engaging, chewing the food, not just swallowing it. Mm. The baby changed the food. Mm. And mm. now the baby had power. So symbolic too. It's deeply yeah. symbolic. So instead of just interjecting the food, swallowing it or spitting it out, which became a model for interjection as a psychological defense, swallowing someone else's opinion whole and it's staying in you like, like some alien, you know, affecting you for the rest of your life, the baby could engage and chew and swallow the pieces it wanted mm -hmm. and spit out the rest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that became a model for assimilation in Gestalt therapy. So now we have this idea that was supposed to be added to Freudian therapy the, the story goes that Pearls knocked on Freud's door <laughs> and Freud opened the door. Pearl said, I have some information you need and I think will be useful to your therapy. He told Pearls what he thought and uh, he told Freud and Freud was not at all interested in him. Yeah. And then Pearls said, screw you in whatever German version of that. <laughs> And went on to invent an entirely different therapy that did and not there, have. And, and, and by the way, that's a good thing. Yes. So now we had, uh, he, for, now we had a got Pearls and Laura. Laura had studied with some of the bodies. She was a dancer. And Pearls was the showman of the whole affair. And he was free to be totally, he didn't have to stay with Freudian ideas at all. So he just kind of like threw them out the window and kept what he liked and left the rest because he felt rejected, he could reject. And it was more the benefit for us. Yeah, yeah. He could do whatever the hell he wanted at that point with, any, with no censorship. So what he ended up doing is he ended up, what by the time I came in to my first Gestalt therapy, anything in 1972, and where the book Ego, Hunger, and Aggression was kind of written in the 50s, mm -hmm. and there was another book written, um, Gestalt Therapy, Excitement and Growth with Pearls, Hefferline, and Goodman, I may be getting the subtext wrong, that later became the Bible that was... Um, often credited quite a bit to Paul Goodman when, when Pearls fell out of favor for cheating on his wife in the West and being too loose. We are human, aren't we? Laura stayed home, Pearls left and went to Esalen. And what Pearls was brilliant at and what Gestalt therapy started with is he would be in a group of people. He didn't like one-on-one -on -one long term therapy. It didn't suit his personality. He was really good at noticing things other people didn't pay attention to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thought therapy was a holistic therapy. When you're lying on a sofa, all you hear is a disembodied voice. Mm -hmm. You don't see the person's body language. You don't get to ask them questions. You can't ask them questions, but you're kind of keeping it within a narrow range. He had everybody, like others, some other therapists were doing, sitting up in a circle, he mm. would sit himself down and say, who wants to work? And they called the seat opposite him, the hot seat. Someone, anyone would get up and sit in that seat. Pearls would have not necessarily ever seen him before. Not, he, this was really like Harry Foudini. It was really a show. He didn't know a thing about them. He had to be extremely confident that he would figure out something. And he would, he would see them, they would, he would say, what would you like to work on? And the person would say, and then Freud would make some observation and suggest an experiment, have him talk to a chair, do something that was very alivening and had never been seen before. And the person could not predict 
what was going to happen. So they really had no defense against it. And mm -hmm. Pearls was extremely clever. And they filmed a lot of videos of him working this way. Mm -hmm. And some were quite good. One was a little bit horrifying uh, in the same way that, that, that Freud was horrifying for his work with Dora. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're great, you're not always going to be right. You could be a genius, but you still get sometimes, it. sometimes because it's new and you're trying different things, what it, all of it is already a little violating of norms. Like it's already a little violating. And part of me, and then sometimes the violation factor can go a little bit more. Fixed. Yes. And what they did is they, one of the things that, and I'll talk about the principles of Gestalt, but they had an interesting thing where they had this very bold, brave woman, Gloria, God bless Gloria. And she agreed to do therapy, a session with three or four famous therapists. Fritz was one of them. And so, you know, you saw her doing therapy with, I forget whether it was Rogers and whomever, Carl Rogers, batches of people. And Pearls was, was working too hard with her, mm -hmm. put it that way. And people thought she was very, he was very tough on her because, you know, he was on the spot and he was trying to be bold. He was trying yeah. to be brilliant yeah. and wasn't as bad as I thought when I finally re looked at it because people were so horrified that, that once they saw this tape, a lot of them never thought again about Gestalt therapy. Mm. So Robert Resnick has recently, who was appointed by Pearls to go to Europe to be the representative of Gestalt therapy and started going in Europe. He was a very brilliant man. He won about a year ago, the American Psych Association Lifetime Achievement Award, the only Gestalt therapist to do it. Yay, Robert Rutznick, I'm giving you a call out, one of my first trainers. And he redid, he did new things in Gestalt therapy, new tapes, well, they're not tapes anymore, new films and videos. And you can go on the website and see a free 30 minute video on Gestalt therapy on relational Gestalt. Now Gestalt always had two sides. It had the very relational side, like you and I here are relating and we don't know what's going to go on. And then we had pearls like the ringmaster who was doing what then was 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 totally radical things like somebody would say um you know i hate my mother and he'd say put your mother in that chair over there and talk to her mm -hmm. well nobody had ever done that before very drama class very very yes. very um, yeah like a, a drama therapy kind of thing and he was influenced by sociodrama, psychodrama, in which it's a group therapy, which uh, was, I forget the people who, their names will come to me or they won't. Yeah. You can look Maybe it up. In the morning, you they can were wonderful. <laughs> and what they did is they had a group reenact a person's life trauma. Mm -hmm. And you'd point people in the group to be different parts of your family. Mm -hmm. And they would, <clears throat> and there would be a director and you could double behind somebody to you'd coax them to, to get the part right. Mm -hmm. And then you could have the feelings and make it turn out better. So yeah. Pearls managed to do that with a one-to-one -one therapy. He made this dramatic situation with these extra chairs or other things, but he became very identified with that two chair technique or three chair as many chairs as you need yeah. and, but that's not all that's not really what gestalt therapy is about that was an experiment that became a technique that became a cliche that's very useful i still use it i love it but it became a cliche people thought that's what it was no that's not i mean from my own experience yeah.